I started off in my basement with my dad shooting plastic pucks at me and I was maybe two or three years old, I guess. I don't know what I was, four or five, whatever. Um, and so I knew, I always knew that I wanted to play goalie, but uh, thankfully my dad, my grandpa had the foresight that I should probably learn how to skate first. And so I spent a year or two playing mini mites, um, largely playing, you know, forward in the fence. But I managed to get one or two games in goal. And then I think by my third year of playing, it was, that was it. I was a goalie from then on. Yeah, I think it was pretty obvious. We used to go down to the old Blues games in St. Louis at the old arena, and my dad and grandpa were off-ice officials, and so we'd always show up early for the games. And in doing so, we were there for warm-ups, and I'd always go and I'd watch the visiting team come into the rink, and for whatever reason, I was drawn to the goaltender on the other team, and I'm sure it had to do almost completely with equipment, because I didn't have any older brothers that were pushing me to play goalie. Uh, I wasn't, back in the day, they always put the big kid in goal. Well, I wasn't really that big, it's just, I love the gear, the masks, everything, and then when they'd come to town, I would study what they were wearing, what companies, what colors, just everything I could possibly look at, and every, uh, every material that I could find in USA Hockey Magazine from all the companies that were out there, I would just study their catalogs, and that's, that's really what started me as a goaltender. I don't remember much about like the technical aspect of it, really, but I do remember that I, I at least had a favorable response from a lot of people that kept saying, well, he really likes it and he seems to be doing well and he should probably keep going. So um, I'm not sure whether my two pad stacks and my skate saves were dead on in form, but I'd like to think that I at least enjoyed it enough that I wanted to keep going because obviously I did. And then, you know, as you get older, then you start to pick up more on what you're doing. But those first couple years are just purely fun of it. I loved it no matter what. I mean, I can't remember whether it went well or not, but I do remember because I got my first set of gear through the association. Uh, Kirkwood Youth Hockey had an old set of black and white Coopers that were on hand, ready to be used, and so I had Cooper pads that were white, which was a big step forward at the time, because this was probably about 1989 or so, or maybe 1990, I guess. And then we did manage to find a set of gloves, I think at Omni Sports in town on Closeout or something, way back. And so I had a pair of brown gloves, I think it was a Cooper like GM30 or 50, it was one of the originals. Uh, didn't even have lacing in the pocket. And so I had a brown, literally brown blocker, brown glove, uh, and a set of Cooper pads, and that's, that's what I rolled with. Yeah, there's a lot of those people. Um, when you've had a career that's lasted uh, as long as my ha mine has, I'm going into my 10th year of professional now. And so, I mean, I, there's so many people along the way, but really the first person in St. Louis uh, starting out as a youngster was Lindsey Middlebrook. He had a goalie camp here called Goaltending by Design that was the first in the city to really organize us and teach us the basics. And, you know, I still use things today that I learned from Lindsay's camps that were in the early 90s when goaltending was completely different than what it is today. But there's still just the basic principles of it I learned from Lindsay. Uh, and I had him again as a coach later on, and um, he was influential for me. And then going on down the list, Don Koharski, who I mentioned earlier, uh, kind of gave us an insight to the NHL what it's like to be there. Uh, a guy named John Wensing too, who played in the NHL a long time, was a Pee Wee Quebec coach. And then, you know, on through the list, our college coach, Joe Marsh, was a guy who could talk to you about anything and everything aside from hockey and showed me another angle of it. And you know, there's just so many people through the years. Um, and then as you get older too, you look at goalie coaches. And I was drafted by Nashville, and Mitch Korn was our goalie coach at the time. He's now with the Capitals, but Mitch really showed me the right path to becoming a professional and what I needed to do to prepare to do that and um, hooked me up with a guy named Chris Economo who I've gone to every year uh, in the Philly area and so Mitch and, and Econ have really been the two guys throughout my whole pro career that I've leaned on and uh, you can tell that I could be here forever talking about people who've helped me out because it's it's a long list and it's a group effort when you get to this level. More than anything else I look back at, and there's still that same shot of adrenaline when you make a big save. And there's moments in games where you make a save that maybe you shouldn't have made, or your team needed that save. Even if it's not a great save, you know that it's at a crucial moment. And uh, the adrenaline that comes with that, and then watching your team rebound, and so often in hockey you go down and score right away at the other end or something. And so that's the one thing my whole career that's really stuck with me that just drives me and is what makes me passionate about it is that craving for that adrenaline rush that comes with it. Sophomore year of high school, I did AAA in town. 
I only did one year of it. I had an incredible goalie partner named Keith Van Gels, and we uh, we really riffed off one another and had a good season together. And so that's it. actually that season is what kind of propelled me on to playing everything higher level. From there, it turned into Junior A hockey in the North American League, which turned into the uh, St. Lawrence University NCAA Division One, which turned into being drafted, which turned into my pro career. So uh, it just kind of it happened organically, and I never really had grand aspirations or even a career path in what I expected to happen. It all just laid itself out for me. My first NHL game though was uh, in Long Island and in the, in the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. The backup goaltender sits basically in the crowd, which none of us like and it happens at some arenas throughout the league and it doesn't make any sense because when they build brand new arenas you'd think they'd be able to stick an extra seat on the end for the backup goalie. But, doesn't happen everywhere, and some of the older buildings that was an afterthought. So um, we get about midway through the second period, and three quick goals go in right away. Um, my goalie partner at the time, uh, Kari Ramo, is now with Calgary now. And I remember thinking, man, this is the first game I've ever dressed. I got called up on Super Bowl Sunday two days ago. And then before I could even think that, man, I might get tossed in, I see Rick Tockett looking over the crowd, over the bench, over the crowd, going, you can't even say anything to me. So, well, this is it. Here we go. And so it was actually kind of good because I didn't have time to think about it. You know, I just got tossed in. I'd never even played an NHL preseason game to that point because I hadn't had an NHL contract. So um, this was really trial by fire. I mean, it was right away. So, yeah, I get tossed in there, and I didn't. I, I think I only faced maybe a dozen shots, but I didn't allow any. Um, I got to handle the puck a bit at NHL speed, and kind of get my feel for things and then literally the next night was a start in Pittsburgh so we were back to back and uh, so my first start was in Pittsburgh and first shot was a two-on-one with Crosby and stopped that but I didn't manage to stop the last three or like six shots and we ended up losing the game in overtime and um, those were the breaks but a couple days later we ended up in Tampa and the first home start I had for the Lightning uh, was the game I mentioned where we beat uh, beat the Islanders one nothing that game and it's to this date my only shutout, but it was my first win and it was quite an experience. My family, it was the first game my parents came to and were there too and my girlfriend, now wife, was there and it was a pretty amazing time. Don't get too wrapped up in trying to play exactly like somebody or looking like, look exactly like somebody or um, you know, worry about your coaches or anything. Just go out and play the game. and. If you find those first couple years, first couple months that you really enjoy it, we're lucky now that resources are there that you can have some help and thankfully the organizations are starting to find goalie specific coaching to help guys move along, girls move along and, and achieve you know, their goals going higher in the sport. But the most important part of it is just having fun and having that you know, organic desire to play the position and uh, one of the biggest things that people are afraid of is the cost associated with it and you know I always try to tell people and make a point of it that I had used equipment until I was 15 years old almost and it may not have been all of it but for the most part it, part, it was piecemeal together from uh, from all around town from organizations and you don't have to spend that money right up front no matter what to buy the top of the line stuff to start things off and you know eventually down the road there comes a time where it is the right time to step up and, and to buy the, the highest stuff that you can get to. But um, if somebody really enjoys something, you can find a way to make it work. You can look around and find gear that's been used a season or two that truthfully is, for a kid, is still almost like new. And it can help defer the cost. It can get your kid into the game who, you know, maybe before you didn't think it was possible because you walked in and saw a sticker on things. But you guys can make it happen and your kids will thank you for it.